Hey everyone, welcome back. This is CC Cycle One. We are reviewing memory work for week eight, starting with math. And today we are skip counting the 14s. And 14s are starting to get up there in the numbers. And so I find it helpful to have a little bit of a, a sheet to look at as we're skip counting so that we can put a visual to the high numbers that we are counting. And what we did with this sheet today was we had three volunteers after we, I introduced the numbers and then we sang the song a couple times together just so everyone knew the tune of the song, which is Camp Town Races, I think. And because of the tune being Camp Town Races, I selected this off of uh, CC Connected. And um, we had three volunteers who would race horses on each of these numbers. So if the horses are gonna race, the first thing they had to do was walk the course so that they could see how their track is gonna look when they race. The second thing they had to do was trot the track. So as they're walking and trotting the track, everyone else in class is helping as an audience to the horse race and to the horses preparing for their race as they walk the track and trot the track. So they're all looking on, cheering for the horses and singing, skip counting the 14s as they go to each number as they're preparing for their race. Then three of them, the three that volunteered to do the race, uh, it's their turn to skip count the 14s as fast as they can without the music on and they're singing the song and then I just time them to see who got through it the fastest. So uh, the tune sounds like this. If you just wanna take any kind of a little toy or Let's any see. item that you could skip count with, it sounds like this. 14, 28, 42, 56, 70, 84, 98, and it goes from there. And that is how we covered the 14s today. For geography today, we had some fun and brought in some items that would help tie these things to our memory that related to uh, the Indus River Valley. So we took out our maps and the first thing we did was had a blue marker that we could indicate all the bodies of water. So the first thing we went over is the Ganges River here. Then we had the Arabian Sea and the Bay of Bengal. For the Arabian Sea, we just put a big blue A there and for the Bay of Bengal, we put a big blue B. And of course, we just traced over the river. And for the Great Indian Desert, we had curry powder that we brought in, and because um, that's the color of sand that you'd find in the desert, and it's in India, which is where curry powder comes from. So we have uh, we sprinkled a little a, a little pile of curry powder on each of the students' maps, and they got to spread it out with their finger, smell it, and get a taste of. India. And then we had uh, chocolate chips that we put out for the Himalayas. And so if you look closely at the map, you'll see that you can find the uh, Himalayan uh, mountain range and the peaks of those. We just put uh, chocolate chips on each of those. So that their little peaks represented those mountains. And uh, that's how we did geography today. So once we got everything labeled, then I would say touch the Arabian Sea touch the Bay of Bengal, touch the Ganges River, touch the Himalayas, and, and so forth. So this is how we reviewed geography today. For timeline, we have Council of Nicaea. That's where they met about the Trinity being three and one. So we take our three fingers and we bring them under, and when they come back up, it's one. So Council of Nicaea, and then we have Augustine of Hippo. For that, we're gonna make an A with our hands. This is an ASL A. Augustine and then he was converted to Christianity so we're going to do the sign for change which is taking your hook hands like this those are X's and you go like that and then you actually turn around during the song and that's Augustine of Hippo the next one is Jerome completes the Vulgate so I'm going to make a J with our hands a J for Jerome and the Vulgate is the Latin translation of the Bible so we're going to do our hands like this for a book or the Bible Okay, so Jerome completes the Vulgate, and then Visigoths sack Rome, and this is an ASLR. <clears throat> so that is the first part, then we switch over to the Middle Ages. We stop right here in the middle of our hand for the Middle Ages, and it's circa 450 to circa 1500. And we do a C for century. 
So uh, circa 450 to circa 1500. And then we have the Council of Chalcedon, and that is where they talked about the two natures of Jesus Christ. So we're going to do the number two, and then um, the sign for Jesus, like we always have for the rest of this year so far. And the last one is Western Roman Empire falls to barbarians. And so we take a W like this and move it to the west. And then it's the Roman Empire falls to barbarians. And we had fun in class today, making sure that we were all doing our best strong face and our flex muscles. And we had a lot of fun doing that. That's how we covered timeline. We just go over the motions and we sing the song together a few times uh, for timeline. For Latin, we have our dog Bingo that we introduced last week, but this time Bingo brought in her little puppies because we want to remember that this is our third declension noun ending. So we had our three dogs, Bingo and her little puppies, who also like to be sang to in that tune of B-I-N-G-O, and it sounds like this. Various E's, E-M-A, various E's, E-M-A, Various E's, E-M-A, singular third declensions. And then we went back around the other side of the table for our plural third declensions, which are ace, un, ibis, ace, ibis, ace, un, ibis, ace, ibis, ace, un, ibis, ace, ibis, plural third declensions. Okay, so that's how we did that for class. The next thing we have is history. Tell me about the age of imperialism. And for that, we talked about the age of imperialism and we showed, these are just pictures that I've had since our first cycle one. So I just brought those out and um, showed them the pictures of what part of the world we're talking about, which was great that it tied into both our geography and our history statement today. So we showed the pictures of Queen Victoria and Mohandas Gandhi. And um, as we sang the tune, as CC has provided, we uh, swayed back and forth to the rhythm of that tune, and we stopped moving as the as the song stopped, and then would restart as the song restarted the tune. And so that was fun too. That was geography. Then we have prepositions. For prepositions, we have of, so we do an O and an F, of, off, you take your hand put it on there and then take it off. And then on, you put it back on. And then on two, you kind of step forward with two feet like you're getting onto a horse or onto something and then out. So of, off, on, on two and out. And then for our, oh, and for class today, we actually brought everybody up to the front. We can do this at home too and just practice going over the whole preposition songs, uh, the preposition song starting with week one. And uh, that way we can make sure that we're keeping it fresh on our mind and reviewing all those motions together. And that's what we did today in class. For science, what are some types of seed plants? We have monocot, dicot, and conifer. And so today I brought in this reference sheet just to show uh, what each of these is like, what their traits are. Monocot has three leaves, dicots have four or five, and then we talked about how conifers are like our evergreens and they are in the area that we live. They have pine cones and instead of leaves they have needles. And uh, we also talked about how monocot seeds are what feeds the world. They produce things like our rice, grass, wheat, corn, things like that. Dicots are like roses, daisies, and things like that. And so it was good to make some of those distinctions. And we just went over reviewing, uh, questioning and answering. Uh, I would question them and they would answer back to me. Some types of seed plants are monocot, dicot, and conifer. And that is how we covered our science. And I think that covers everything for today. I did want to share with you guys, I meant to share this last week, but we also, for Tin Whistle, refreshed our memory with the review of the Tin Whistle parts through a quick song that I learned uh, during our first time going through cycle one. But I wanted to share that here too, just in case anybody wants to remember all those parts. And uh, it goes like this. 
Do you know the tin whistle, the tin whistle, the tin whistle? Oh, do you know the tin whistle? These are its parts. Barrel, fipple, mouthpiece, finger holes. One, two, three, four, five, six, left hand on top. And that is our like song for parts of the tin whistle. And I think that is a wrap for this week, week eight, week eight. I hope that is helpful and I look forward to seeing everyone next week for week nine. Bye.